We're going to work with k-factors in this lesson, so I'll show you what a k-factor is, I'll show you how they're applied to sheet metal rules, and then I'll introduce you to the k-factor calculator developed by TEDCF Publishing. When a plate is bent, some of the material is stretched and some of it is compressed. The red area shows the material that has been compressed, and the blue area shows the material that has been stretched. In most cases, more material is stretched than is compressed, so the net result is the part gets longer when you bend it. Between these areas is an arc of material that is neither compressed nor stretched, so it doesn't change in length. So the flat pattern can be calculated by adding the length of the arc to the length of the parts that are not bent. The arc is on what's called the neutral axis because it doesn't change, and the length of the arc is called the bend allowance. So if you add the length of this leg, the length of the arc, and the length of this leg, you get the length of the flat pattern. The problem is finding the location of the arc. Once you know its location, you can calculate the length of the bend allowance. So these definitions are applied to sheet metal bends. The arc or bend allowance is on the neutral axis, so it's called the neutral axis because the material is neither stretched nor compressed, and it's measured from the inside surface of the bend. If you take this distance and divide it by the thickness of the material, you get the k-factor. But you still need to know this distance, and it's calculated by measuring sample parts. Now let's look at how k-factors are added to the style library. As I said before, when you change styles, your changes affect just the part file. But we have the administration project active so that we can save our changes to the style library. We'll start by adding new k-factors. Click the pencil next to the k-factor combo box. This opens the default k-factor substyle. As you know, you can open the page by clicking the substyle in the left window. Currently the unfold method is set to linear, and if you click the down arrow, you can see that you can select a bend table or the custom equation option. The linear method uses k-factors to calculate the deformation of parts when they're bent. A bend table uses measured data to determine the deformation or correction factor for bends, and the custom equation option allows you to create your own equations. We'll talk about bend tables in the next lesson. For now we're going to work with k-factors. So leave the setting set to linear. The default k-factor is set to 0.44, and as I said earlier, k-factors can vary depending on the material, bend angle, and thickness of the sheet. You can use any naming convention you want, but I recommend that you use one of two methods. One method uses the k-factor in the name, for example, 44 or 44 default. This way you know the size of the k-factor you're applying. Another method is to name your k-factors by the thickness, bend radius, and bend angle. If you use a standard material for all your parts, this method simplifies the guesswork for bends with various thicknesses, bend radii, and bend angles. We'll use this naming convention in this course so that you'll learn how it works. Ultimately, you'll use the k-factor naming convention that works best for you. Start by highlighting the default k-factor, and then click the New button. We're just going to add a few k-factors for 62,000 sheets, but feel free to add k-factors for other thicknesses. Name this k-factor T062, R062, A90. This is a k-factor for 62,000 plates with a bend radius of 62,000 and a bend angle of 90 degrees. Set the k-factor for the style to 0.4 and then save your changes. Now repeat the process and create these k-factor substyles. The style for 8th inch bend radii have a 0.41 k-factor. The style for 3 16 bend radii has a 0.42 k-factor. And the style for quarter inch bend radii has a 0.43 k-factor. Keep in mind that the settings applied in this course are samples only. In order to determine the k-factor of a part, you need to measure the part. That said, I've written a k-factor calculator to help you calculate an accurate k-factor for your bending operations and sheet sizes. For the most part, the default 0.44 k-factor will be very close to most all bending operations and sheet sizes you may use. If you need a more precise result, open the k-factor calculator in the Excel folder. 
This spreadsheet is designed to calculate the K factors for bins. Keep in mind that if you change the material thickness or bending operation, the K factor may change and you'll have to repeat the following process. The first step is to measure the length of the virgin material. If the material is fed from a larger sheet or roll, you have to scribe a reference line on the sheet before you make your bin and final cut. Once you know the length of the virgin material, fabricate a sample piece and then measure the dimensions shown in the image. Notice that H1 and H2 are measured from the edge of the outer side of the bin surface. Obviously, the more accurate your measurements are, the more accurate your k-factor will be. Once you know the dimensions of your sample piece, enter them in the windows. When you enter the last value, the calculator outputs the results. Most of the values are self-explanatory, but I do want to tell you that the flat A and flat B links are the flats on the parts. So if you add the lengths of the flats to the bend allowance, you'll get the flat length of the part. Bent nominal length is the length of the part after it's been bent. So it's the length of the part along the center line of the material. And as you can see, it's stretched a little over 7,007 inch. Now let's look at how accurate your measurements need to be. The K factor is 0.44. Let's say that instead of measuring 1.837 for H1, you measured 1.838. One thousandth of an inch difference. Change the value, and you can see that the K factor has changed to 0.43. So if your measurements are off by just one thousandth of an inch, it can change the K factor. Now let's change the bend angle. Set H1 back to 1.837 and then change the bend angle to 119 degrees. Now the key factor is 0.79, so your measurements need to be accurate. But this also means that a wide range of key factors will probably work fine, especially for parts made of thin material. In most cases, if you get a key factor above 0.5, you need to check your measurements. Now that you know how key factors are calculated, you're ready to learn about bend tables. You'll do this in the next lesson.